Is this me, the one AJ, Anthony Jordan? Oh, it feels good to be back. Huh. Underslept and all, but we back. I'm Nico Lero. And we're asking, what are the top 10 most exciting films still to come out in 2024? Yeah, so we've obviously been away for the last sort of month and a half. Baby number two arrived. And yeah, uh, we missed a load of our planned top 10s over the course of the last few weeks. But there's still half of the year left. There's a lot of great movies to come. Some great ones have come and gone already. Lots of great ones have come and gone already, actually. But what are the ones that are left? What is remaining this year that we're excited about? That's what we're talking about today. Make sure you hang around until the end to find out what makes our most anticipated. So hang around until then. But AJ, shall we get right into it? Yeah, yes, let's do it indeed. Uh, you kick it off with your number 10? I can kick off with my number 10. So, uh, oh, it's for people who are long-time listeners, the lack of intro is going to throw you, but hey, we're trying something new. Roll with it. Uh, I'm going to start number 10. Not a lot of comic book movies come out this year. This one's kind of a comic book movie, comic book character. I'm going with Joker fully at deux. That is a punt on my Okay, own. we will talk about it later. Yeah. My number nine... Purely based off of nostalgia and the fact that that first trailer was actually really, really good. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I'm really psyched. It is also a punt. Cool. I I just won't talk today then. Um, You may as well say punt now for this next one. Just get your finger ready on the pulse. I know you. And I guess I could say you're welcome because number eight is Moana too. So it's in the same category where it's my number nine. Damn. Um, it is my number nine. It was a lot higher. And then I yeah. saw a couple of trailers that kind of pushed a lot of stuff back. I, I essentially also kept it in because it is Moana. But I'm also keeping it low because it's Moana. And I say that because <laughs> I love Moana and that is me. Like I, I even joked with a friend and I didn't realise it is actually last year, one month, Moana tracks were my most played songs. <laughs> like I'm deep, <laughs> I'm deep. But I'm also scared of what sequels can be, and I don't know what they're doing. The trailer looked okay, but I, it wasn't enough for me to be like, oh, the journey continues. And dare I say, Moana's journey ended in mm. Moana one. So it's like, I, hey, the same way Toy Story ended, and two was good, three was mm. good. Moana two could be good. Notice I didn't. Add an extra number because it doesn't exist. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, look, the, the, that that first Moana movie was such a breath of fresh air in a post frozen world, which we were neither neither of us were really that hot on. Moana was everything we wanted. It had a great story, great cast of characters. I'm not saying Frozen didn't it? Didn't it just wasn't to my and AJ sensibilities? Um, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what they do next. I do think they're muddying the water a little bit when that fan asked Dwayne Johnson, like, hey, is this a sequel, uh, a live action remake? What are we doing? And he was like, both. It's like, okay, so the animation's a sequel and the live action movie is a live action re- a live action remake. Why we need a remake so soon of an animated movie that was out less than a decade ago? Only The Rock can tell me. Spoiler, it's the money. <laughs> Pretty much all it is. Yeah, he's cashing in because he, he's going to be Maui while he could be Maui. I get it. He also might have an American nightmare to deal with in the not-too-distant future, but we'll see about that one. Um, Listen, it's cool to see him on the board of TKO and whatnot, but I'm much more excited for the animation than I am for the live-action remake. Much more. Much, much, much more. Um, This is still a movie which is deserving of attention. It's... it's, This will add to my... To my stance, that Disney's about to go through a massive revival. If you just cool. look at the things lining up, this is going to be part of it. What is your number 10? Uh, my number 10, because of the way you highlighted comic, I do have a few more comics, I'll be honest. When I looked, I don't see a lot of stuff being highlighted. Um, Sydney World's website was a lot, and then I checked websites, but time and be time, and you're never sure what's actually being released and what isn't. Um, mm-hmm. This one, I'm. <laughs> I'm anxious. I don't know which way I really feel about it. I'm going Craven. Do you know what? Um, it nearly made my list too. It's it's. I, I'm nervous about it based on the fact that it's um, 
based Sony. on the fact that it's yeah, it's Sony and they're very, very hit and miss. There's that silly soundbite going around that, oh, everything that Sony makes is terrible. It's really not. They're still responsible for the best Spider-Man movies out there. They still put out some decent, a decent Venom movie. They did the Spider-Verse stuff. Like when they get it right, they get it really right. Um I will be proving that a bit later on. When they get it wrong, we get Morbius. Like I, I'm not the one to, uh, and Madam Web. Woo. The Woo. unseen Madam Web, because I don't actually know a single person who went to see Madam Web. It's that bad. Like it was the reviews were that bad. Yeah. Literally this. And yeah, it it's one of those things where they they, they their hit and miss ratio is two fifty fifty. So obviously because public perception makes that then an actuality that they're bad when in fact they're not they're just a bit hit and miss i'm worried we're looking at another morbius here but i am hopeful because i love aaron taylor johnson it, it was a sympathy look there, there there were two other films uh, that i had in line and this was my biggest hope out of the three of them and that's why it's my number 10 essentially um it was a case of i hope this one does more the other two I can touch on them later if we have time for a um I can't remember the word. I'm I'm a bit out of it. Reserveless essentially. <laughs> the additionals. Um the honorable yeah. mentions. That's the one. That's the word I <laughs> uh, that, that escaped my head. Uh number nine was my one or two. And I'm gonna keep it number uh, I'm gonna keep it Disney for my number eight. And that is Mufasa, the light. That's yeah, a punt. Cool. Yeah, okay. It's a punt to you, sir. Uh, over to moi. So my number seven in that case, I am, oh, Jesus, a movie that's been through so much, but let, let, let me talk about it. Uh, the Crow remake with Bill Skarsgård. That's I feel fun. so bad, but it's a pun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm glad we've done it in this sort of today. It's a pun to yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're number I mean, six. If you've, seen, if you've seen the trailer, you're about to pump me again. Gladiator 2. <laughs> Ooh, I should have started. It's a punter It's a punter <laughs> done. Right. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> do you know what? Considering you haven't spoken, and I think we're on a similar territory, my number seven was the punt from earlier Beetlejuice 2. Or Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> it's nostalgia more than anything. I need to say this right now. I don't hold the original Beetlejuice in the high regard that so many people seem to hold it. Um, it's really good. Don't get me wrong. I am not hating on the original Beetlejuice, but the fact that you hear some people like, this is a goated movie. This is one of the greatest movies ever. I'm like, it's really not. Like, nostalgia it's a barrel goggles. of fun. Nostalgia, nostalgia goggles, I believe. Nostalgia goggles, and I think a little bit cult of personality stuff. is like people of a certain ilk say it's good. Therefore, I will say I will hype it even more. Maybe. And that's just someone, I'm saying this is someone who really likes the damn movie. I like, like it. I, I really like, like it. it. Sorry, um, I was cutting you there. No, I, it's all good. I like it as well. And I feel, what I feel like is what I watched as a kid and thought was really cool when I was like, oh, let me watch Beetlejuice again. I was like, it, uh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. But it's not what I remember. And that's nope. why number two has kind of got me in that era. But I, I don't say it was bad. It's just not what I remember. It's so we often say on this show, just because something is overrated, that doesn't make it bad. Something can be amazing. Something could be a five star masterpiece and still be overrated because it's like, yes, it's amazing. But ooh, slow down. the Dark Knight, perfect example of a movie that's overrated. It is categorically an incredible film, in our opinion. Some would argue the greatest comic book movie ever made. This guy argues that it transcends the comic book genre and shouldn't even be viewed as a comic book movie, such as its prowess. Some of the greatest acting performances ever. And yet, people lose their mind for this movie. I'm like, guys, easy. Like, chill. You look at the IMDb top 250. That thing is in there in the top five. I'm like, nah. <laughs> just 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 no like just and that's that's you know the public voting for it that's how it's got to that rank and it's like it's amazing but it's not like top five of all time amazing like can you cool your role please 
t- top 50, top 100. That I would listen to. Top five? Mm, come on. Yeah. Th- this is the thing. So a film can be amazing and overrated. Beetlejuice was a really, really fun movie. But it's definitely overrated. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to argue with that because I feel similarly. Um, Beetlejuice... Beetlejuice. The trailer looked fun. I, I, I am. Um, General Ortega feels like the heir apparent to be playing in in this film as well. Yeah. Um. Everything is in in place. Um. The, the reappearance of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. The way you know his name has been teased. Like, don't say it twice. Oh my god, you said it twice. Don't say. It. Oh, you said it three times. He's back. But it seems like now we're venturing into a world that I, again sometimes stuff are a unique capsule. I understand it's taking a lot of time. Now, if you've been trying to write the perfect Beetlejuice movie for all that time and now you've got it, fine. If it's like, hey, you know what, I'm bored. I think I've put this together. It can go mm. extremely wrong. And that's why it's really low for me. I'm just like, it's middle ground. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I don't know if I necessarily need to run to the cinema to see it. But mm. I'm, I'm, I'm down is the way I feel about it. I'll see it in the cinema because I like supporting Michael Keaton. But yeah, I get where you're coming from completely. That, that was your seven, yeah? Yeah. Your six? Again, a punt from earlier. Joker, fully ever. No. T- take it away, my man. You were higher than me. Look, honestly, it's not the trailer that has captured me. It's the first film that has captured me. It's the word Harley mm-hmm. Quinn that has captured me. Um, mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Harley Quinn itself. Trust in the people who created the first film to give me Harley. That's what I'm saying. The the idea of it being musical and Lady Gaga doing it, I don't know. Like Margot's done well in giving me a Harley I kind of remember from the cartoon. Bear in mind, Harley Quinn was created in our era. She wasn't in the comics. She was created in the Batman yeah. animated world. Yeah. And what uh, Margot Robbie done with it is something I enjoy. Now, in the same vein of me saying... Jack Nicholson is the Joker of our time. He was much more serious than Cesar Romero. This is our Joker. <laughs> Along came a man called Heath Ledger. Even in your case, you could say Jared Leto. Even right now, the man playing the Joker in this room, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. There are different styles that you can deliver and give a different story and give a great narrative, you know? Something that people yeah. enjoy. Yeah, I'm fact. looking forward to a different view on Harley. It doesn't have to be the Harley I know. But she still needs to have some traits to it. And one of them will be obsessed with Joker. It's, but this, my excitement for this film relies very, very, very heavily on how much I enjoyed the first film. I don't even need to see a trailer. I know what, the, the, the poster says what I'm looking for. I'm like, oh, you've got two characters I, as a fan, adore. And I trusted you with the last one. Continue. But it could go horribly wrong. I'm very aware of that. But it's one I feel I want to see in the cinema based off of Joker. I'm one of the people on a very small island who does not care for Moulin Rouge because I don't need to see remixes in a movie to get songs like Roxanne and Like a Virgin in there. I am not clear on the musical direction they're taking for Joker Folia 2. If it's a Moulin Rouge treatment, I'm already one foot out the door. I don't need to see reimaginings of famous pop songs and cult songs. Like I, I, don't, I just don't need it. If you've got original scores and sounds and songs written for the movie, I'm a lot more interested in it then. I'd also like to add, I am not sold on Lady Gaga as an actress. People are, oh, but what about the uh, Bradley Cooper movie? What was it called? Help me. Um, I was just... So- a star, star is born and a star is born. Um, she literally plays herself. I'm like the struggling musician who becomes a musician. Ooh, <laughs> deep cut. Then the moment you gave her something to do in House of Gucci, I was like, and you see, here's where the problem is. Because now it is overacting 101 and your acting is actually so piss poor that you are taking me out the movie. And that I don't need in a Joker movie. I don't need someone who can't hold the screen with Joaquin Phoenix. That's going to take me out. However, I haven't seen the movie yet. I want to see where this goes. I'm open. As you said, because of how 
damn good the first one was. Yeah, yeah. And there I say the way the, the the first film ended as well, you could feel the carnage of the Joker's influence. And the, uh, this is the main minion, essentially, of the Joker's. This is the one. And we all, if yeah. you're from our era, not to say, but if you follow the Batman animation, I have to say, you are aware how bat crap crazy <laughs> Harley can be. And you want to see that chaos on screen. You know, it, it matches the Joker. And that that's what comes with it. So, yeah. But anyway, in, enough repeating of what we were saying. Over to you with your number five, sir. Oh, I hope this is coming out this year. They say it's coming out this year. As of right now, this is still coming out this year. When you hear what franchise it's from, you're going to be shocked. This isn't my number one. Oh, number well, five, it's a... Lord yes, of the I Rings, War of the Rohirrim. Now. Some of what I'm about to say may fall on deaf ears, as you are not someone who has seen any Lord of the Rings from from start. Well, you've seen you've seen the two towers, so you, you are aware of the Rohirrim. Um, not enough the guys. The guys who defend Helm's Deep. Progress is not worth educating. <laughs> well, educate the fans. But I, I will be educated with everyone else. You see the big wall that they hide behind at the end of the movie. A again. Let's do it from let's let's imagine I hadn't even seen two towers because essentially that's what you're doing. It's not for my benefit, it's okay. entertaining. Yeah, cool. The, the, the listeners, um, the viewers. It's it's listen, Lord of the Rings is in a very strange place at the moment because a lot of people really dislike the Hobbit. I liked it, I just wasn't in awe of it the way I was the original trilogy. A lot of people really hated um what was it war of the ring that came on uh that came on amazon i can't even remember it see and i'm a massive rings fan and i thought it was fine it felt a bit fan made fan fictiony to me um a, there were some really good parts of it but i do look back now and think how much of that was nostalgia uh, how much of that was you know visual noise showing me something i like to mask poor storytelling and then you come to this war of the rohirrim it's an animated film, but it's animated by the people who did all, I'll spay the names, but John Howe and Alan Shaw, who did all of the conceptual art for the original Lord of the Rings movies, as well as having the producers of the original Lord of the Rings movies making it. So this is very very much the Middle Earth that we all know and love. This is going to be true to source material. And the fact that it's going to tell the story of, in my opinion, the coolest race in the whole of Middle Earth, which is the Rohirrim, the men of Rohan. Man, I can't wait for this. But the only thing we've got to go on are this image and one, one other image that Variety released. There's no trailer as of yet. There's no further details to it. It's all up in the air. If I knew more about it, you can be assured this would be higher. <laughs> Um, from your knowledge of the book, is there more that you could like, or is it completely like it's a side quest from the book? It, it, it's it's side from the book. This doesn't follow. It's not that era. This is this right. is pre Lord of the Rings, pre Hobbit stuff. Right. This film, depending on the time of release, may already be released. In which case, I'm not afraid to just take one of my honourables. But I'm going to go for at number five. Sorry, we're right. Yeah, that was your five. Yeah, five, five, five. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm going to go with Twisters. Yeah, I'm excited for this too. I tried to get us tickets for the premiere on this. We do have a BFI accreditation now, um, but unfortunately we're not big enough yet for the major premieres. Love to Strike Media and all of the PR and publicist teams. Love to BFI for inviting us to their press screenings and stuff. Apparently we're not big enough fry yet to get on the red carpets or to go to the uh, press screenings Good of the big blockbusters. It'll come. We'll keep growing. But yeah, I'm excited for this. Look, Twister itself, and we are not talking the ice lolly or the mm -hmm. rap. We are being the actual tornado movie that came out. When we were doing natural disaster movies, mid 90s, Twister was a very fun and good film to, like, to, like, to follow. I, I had great fun with it. It was something, it's a film that you could invest your time into. It, it shows you something that, 
okay, it may not be the most... It shows you that there are such things as tornado chasers, essentially. I don't know how close to reality it is, but it tells you what people are doing and how they, they study tornadoes. And I was... It's something I'm very fond of, like, as a, as a memory of a film. And I, I remember seeing the posters, like, they're not daring to remake it, are they? And when I heard it was a sequel, I was like, hey, I'm down. I don't know why I was so protected of the first film. Like, essentially, <laughs> the sequel is could be a remake because I doubt there's going to be any link to it, short of a, hey, that was the guy who taught me. But I was really like, how did they remake Twister? It's stupid, I know. But it, it felt warming that they just continued the story as opposed to removed the story. <laughs> Logic AJ has misplaced right loyalty for the wind that threw the cow. <laughs> yes, because I had great laughter with that. And uh, yes, the cow I, scene I, was great. It, it was, a, I think it also sets the tone for the film, doesn't it? You're yeah. like, oh, oh, okay. So, yes, tornadoes do pick up absolutely anything, and you're just giggling and laughing. But, it, you know, yeah, it sets the tone. You're like, oh, if it done that to the cow, why are they chasing it? Why are they trying to go into the eye of the storm? Here we are. Shout out, Will. But anyway. Like, it's it continues. So I'm like, bring it on. And I'm seeing the posters as I'm traveling, and I'm like, bring it on. Honestly, I, it, it's it's just, look, again, nostalgia yep. for these past three films, but it works for me. I'm down. Dude, I'm very much with you on this. I don't have a soft spot for the original like you do, but I saw the trailer for this, and I was like, do you know what? This looks like a bunch of summer Coke and popcorn fun. And I do you know what? I, I don't think it's going to try to take itself too seriously. I don't think it's going to try and reinvent the wheel or the genre. I think it's going to be a harmless hour and a half, hour 40 disaster romp with a lead actor who's becoming a very big deal in Glenn Powell. Nothing more. Legitimately, I just want to just clarify. I'm not like the biggest defender of... Twister one, but I'm just, are you sure? I just didn't want it to be a. Re- I just didn't want it to be a remake. I just, I just want everyone to be like before all the comments, like, how do you love this film so much? No, I had great fun with it, and I just didn't feel. My like man it. hates Woody Harrelson, but Twisters, give me that. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Anyway, <laughs> that was my number five. Not... That was your five. All right, man. Uh, my number four. Uh, this, this, this. You're not going to be surprised about. Transformers one, dude, bro. Dude. Do you know what? Before I saw two trailers, this was my number eight. But then I started pushing stuff up. I I'm torn on it because I, it looks awesome. It looks really fun. It looks really good. <laughs> really I, 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 I crap you guys not right. I've I've the honourables are there. It's eleven. Like that's the poster. I, I was all over it. And I, do you know what it is? I was excited, but I'm just like little bits of will it, it? Do you know what it is? They've made the Transformers the Power Rangers, and I'm like, I want the. I I, I don't know if I want a more serious origin story. That's the thing that threw me, but I will let you run with it. So, just based on what I saw on the trainers, at uh, trainers trailers, <laughs> this is the origin story. Like that, it, it. This is correct. Like they're putting a bit of a comedic spin on it. And that part of the trailer, I was like, oh, don't do this. Don't make the Transformers a comedy. And then the action hit. And I was like, oh, no, this works. This works so much. Like, when they throw, I was like, damn, there you go. This is the Transformers I wanted. Am I going to get a Ravage Eject? Probably not. But you'll No, the voice is nowhere near there yet. The voice is nowhere near there. You'll forever have that bruise on your arm for that cinema experience. Um (laughs) I like the fact that from what I've read, Chris Hemsworth, who's playing Optimus Prime now, apparently he went and hung around with Peter Cullen um, and spent like a month with him, just just like following him around. And again, this is all rumor. I don't know how true it is. We could X him. We could tweet him and say, is this true? But if if tabloids and rumors are to be believed, apparently he was living with Peter Cullen, the original voice of Optimus Prime for a few weeks. And he was like, I need you to just narrate your whole life as Optimus. And it was like, Peter Cullen is now entering the bathroom. <laughs> like, Fair enough. I, <laughs> if it was, I, I'm Optimus Prime and I like frosted shreddies. <laughs> Can you imagine? I am <laughs> he must the do- for the frosted shreddies. I am applying the milk to 
the frothage ready. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that's all true, maximum respect to Chris Hemsworth because he must have one had a blast doing that, and two talk about applying yourself. Applying yourself, man. It's like I'm going to be Optimus Prime. Let me go and learn from Optimus Prime. The trailer looks great. I love the fact that they're going back to early, early, early pre-Optimus Prime stuff. Like this ain't Optimus you're seeing. This Orion Pax. This yeah. he's not Optimus yet. And I'm like, yeah, boy, give me that origin story. Give me that. I'm unf I'm unfamiliar with the origin, and I was like, this will be fun. And I wasn't even sure if there was an origin story or mm. if they're just creating it. But either way, I was like, this looks fun. But as I said. And maybe it was the influence of Power Rangers when I saw that they were like, You've made it to the surface, you get these stones. And then I start seeing roundhouse kicks. I was like, ah, Hmm, Megazord. <laughs> like, that, that, that was just the, 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 the thoughts I had in my head, but I was still really excited for it. As I said, no crap, it was number 11. I wasn't at all when I heard they were doing a Transformers animation with a kind of 3D, you know, modern animation style. Really sold on the trailer. Looking forward to this. Oh, That's no, my number four. It's fun. I don't know why I needed Transformers to be more serious. Even the live action was comedic. But anyway, I digress. Right. What's your number four? Which most people probably would assume would have been number one. Again, if we release it in time, it's well, it'll be out just in time. Yes, of course. It's Deadpool and Wolverine. Damn, that's my number three. Okay, cool. Um, look. Maybe it would have been the high intentions of number one. Let's be honest. There's a lot. I don't want to say a lot. Random. There's a lot of expectation for this film because people have had a lot of fun with them. Now I'm aware that I'm in reverse to the rest of the world, where everyone prefers number one, and then they feel number two slipped. I was, I think I was overhyped for number one. I mm. I came in with a lower ballpark, and I was like, oh, number two is really fun. Oh, Brad Pitt, like <laughs> yeah, the small bits, right? and I was like, "This is fun." <gasps> There's Juggernaut, like it, it. It gave me enough to give. That me was cool. Fun. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. And I, what I love is that you guys had seen it before me, but no one spoiled that surprise for me. So when I did go into the cinema and I did see it, I lost my ish, just like you guys did. So I'm yeah, yeah. very appreciative for that not being a spoiler. Um, this feels like too little, too late, and that's a bit of the issue. I'm aware of the Wolverine and Deadpool comic love. I'm aware of the jabs that have continuously gone. Mm. I'm aware that we're in a world of multiverses and universes and the rest. However, I have seen them go, huh, huh. I apologize to anyone who is on a pod, but I done the sign of the cross and then changed it to an X because I saw old man Logan. I saw you put him in the ground. I've even seen when time travel said that he told Charles and Magneto to go do one. We'll keep it as that, even though he used the F bomb. Like I, he had said he will never be. And I love the guy. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. He owned it from, you know, the first movie. But you, when you tell me you're not going to, I just feel like I'm hearing cash grab. Which, hey, if you offered me that kind of money, I would play Wolverine too. But I'm hoping it's as good as the excitement and the anticipation. So I've kind of lowballed my expectations because I'm like, yeah. But I'm still I'm, excited. Yeah, I'm very similar to you in the sense that I'm l slightly lowballing, despite the the furore which is surrounding this movie at the moment. Um. I'm lowballing, but for very different reasons than you. I've been tricked into believing a movie was great once before, and it was called Spider-Man No Way Home. That story made no sense. Every time I go back and watch it, it is just plot armor after plot armor after plot armor with plot hole after plot hole after plot hole. But it's fine, because the three Spider-Men are in it, and they do their the pointy thing. And they brought back villains from the different eras. And it's like, oh, cool, look, nostalgia fan service. And it's like, listen, if that if that's your cup of tea, respect. That's fine. I'll be the first to say that one thing I actually remember when we all went to see No Way Home is walking out. You were all hyped. And I was like, it's good. Like, it was fun. And I remember your reaction because you were on a, a real hype train. You were like, oh, what? Like, have some fun. What is wrong? And I'm like, 
I mean, the story didn't make a lick of sense. And you went in on me quite hard. I was like, ah, do you know what? It's not the time. He's 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 had a laugh. Let let him have it. Um, but the more I've gone back and watched it, and this is the thing, I, it's a lot of fun, Spider Man No Way Home. But the story don't make a lick of sense. Now, one thing that we were covering a lot in the build up to Deadpool and Wolverine was the amount of nostalgia and cameos that are going to hit. That's fine. Do I hope I'm going to see Channing Tatum as Gambit? Finally. Will I get a kick out of seeing a Ben Affleck Daredevil and a Jennifer Garner Electra? Most definitely. But if that's all you got to give me is some nostalgia and a kind of affirmation that this is going to bring in the X-Men to the MCU, which I think is what it's going to do. Okay. What else you got? Because nostalgia and visual noise, my favorite words, they're only going to keep me entertained for so long before my analytical hat starts going on and going, what story are we actually trying to tell here? What is the story? That is what a film is. That is what a movie is. It tells a story. You're showing me pretty images. What are they telling me? That's my reservation with this because there's been so many TV spots and there's like four trailers for this now. I still couldn't tell you what this movie's about. But it wouldn't have it wouldn't have it wouldn't have depth. It's the story is Wolverine's meeting Deadpool. That's all it is. After it all, it seems jokes, to be that, and that ain't enough. That ain't enough. That that's that's, that's what shallow. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it's a cash grab movie. It's the well, it's the wind up for both of them. It, you know, they're winding up on this whole series. I'm being Wolverine for the last time. I'm being Deadpool for the last time. He may do Deadpool for. But hey. Which is a shame because I genuinely thought Ryan had more Deadpool in him. I don't see a reason for him to stop doing Deadpool now. He may do. He may not. He probably will do. But then there comes a point when it's from Ryan's perspective. Do you just want to be Deadpool? Yes, he was born to play Deadpool, but you want to be something else. You know, granted, when you do become that, when you do become part of the MC, the Marvel canon, you do say I'm dead and then enough money comes back and Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, the says, fake, oh, the I'm fake death universe. universe. The yeah, Marvel you know? fake death universe. 100%. Hey, look, hey, I'm Tony Stark again. I love you 3,000 plus one because mm. I'm back. Like, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm taking a jab. It's not officially confirmed he's going to be back, but we all know what it is. I can understand an actor wanting to step away to be not just Iron Man, you know? It, you know, Christopher Reeve wants to be known for other films apart from just Superman. It's not, it's not new. It happens to everyone, you know? Mm. For sure. It, 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 my my, my, my build on that would be how's, how's Danny Jr.'s career been since Endgame? Ooh. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It, now, that's what I'm saying. Once you get caught in that Marvel vortex, it's pretty much that. Hey, it's the same yeah. for, you know, yeah. Chris Evans. <laughs> I'm excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. Like, very excited, but I'm trepidatious. I'm not as excited as I think the rest of the world is. Look, I'll have a good time. I know I'm going to have a good time, but I know in the yeah. back of my mind, I'm like, guys, you should have done it before. Do you know that Wolverine film where you, like, one thing, like, they've made redemption, but when you, the first time I saw Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool, his mouth mm. was so shut. I haven't forgotten it. Yes, we've re we've retconned <laughs> it. I'm aware of it. But, you know, all of it just feels like course correction. Every Deadpool film feels like a course correction. That, that's just the way I feel about it. I do but, hope Deadpool with his mouth sewed up actually shows up just for a bit of jokes. Well, do you remember that he killed, didn't he kill him? In Logan's Deadpool dead as well, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> like, true. Um, right. We talked about comic books because, what, is it back to me? Because it's my number three now, right? Because it was mm -hmm. your four, my friend. Yeah. We talked about comic book movies. We talked about Sony and I didn't want to be the comic book mark, but I saw the trailer to this because at first I saw it, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to leave it. I saw the trailer to this and I was like, you've actually got me. Mm. And I wasn't the guy. Oh. Venom. <laughs> Venom, the last dance. I was actually really, at first, the, the stupid bits, him dancing and what have you. But when they start to say, like, my aliens are coming and then you start to see it and it's like, this is the last ride, I was like, this is interesting. I actually sat back. For me, it wasn't on my list at first. Deadpool was nowhere near my list. I was, uh, not Deadpool. Um, Venom. Venom was nowhere near my list. I even saw the post. I was like, when it comes out, it comes out. I was like, just have a look at the trailer. Oh, it changed. Oh, it changed. Fair enough. Like, yeah. 
I was like, I'm, 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 I'm down with this one. Still, very... obviously, no, go on. still kind of on that lane of, obviously, they're now going to play a part to show us how Venom now moves into the Spider-Man universe. But I was like, I don't care. This Tom bit, yeah, go on. Ride, ride into the sunset, boy. I'm waiting to see this one. Well, he's riding. He got a Venom horse. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I get major Ghost Rider vibes from this trailer. I don't know why. It just gave me vibes that I'm watching a Ghost Rider movie again. Um, I wish Which I could is, say this. the first one, not too bad if it's the second. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. We're past that now. I you wish I could say this trailer fun. did something to me like it did for you. It didn't. If you enjoyed it, that's awesome. I hope it's great. Um, I did not like the last Venom movie at no, all. Terrible. But I really liked the first one. I'm mid I'm... on the first. No, I really liked the first one. I know one. a lot, of people, an, I know a lot of people did. I think a, a few bits were spoiled. So by the time I got to it, I was like, okay. And half of it was thrown in the trailer. So I'd essentially seen the film before I'd sat down on the chair. Fact. But, um, you know, between spoilers and, yeah, the trailers. But, yeah, one, I'm okay with. Two, I was like, this is bad. But this one, I was like, okay. And before, I did not think, I never thought that would be me. I did not think that would be me for the third film. Yeah, here it is at, num at number three. But yes, sir, you're number two. This one caught me. I think you've seen the trailer for it. And maybe you've forgotten that it's coming out, but it's out apparently on Christmas Day. Nosferatu. I did forget. I did forget. Oh, it was on my list my of films to look forward to. I did forget. God, I'm excited for this. From... And I have seen the trailer, which makes it worse. Oh, the trailer's good. Oh, the trailer is so, so, so good. And it is from one of the hottest directors in Hollywood at the moment. Like, this guy is on such a winning streak for me. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. But between The Witch, The Lighthouse, and The Northman, I, like, Tim Burton can suck a fat one. Because there's a new master in town when it comes to gothic visualization. What Robert Eggers, Robert Eggers, however you pronounce his name, what he does with visceral, cerebral visual storytelling, there's very few, if anyone, in the biz nowadays who's doing it like him. It's stunning. It, it's like it's like gothic Shakespeare on screen, what he does. It is like The Witch, The Lighthouse, and The Northman are so damn good very different reasons now you're telling me he's remaking a silent vampire movie with willem dafoe his muse oh give me that for days bro Do you know i think this is the second time dafoe's playing nosferatu no 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 i take it back well he's playing it was he's not playing it, nosferatu in this did he i'm sure he was in another film about the making of nosferatu now i know john markovich was in it but why is dafoe still sticking in my head he might be, bro. You might be right. I have to fact check myself there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. I feel like a punk because I did forget that one. Um, yeah. Good call. Good call. Nosferatu. God, it looks good. So I'm just fact checking myself. Shadow of the Vampire. Who was in it? Cast Willem Dafoe. Yes, he was Max Shrek. Okay. That's what I, I knew he was in the film. The Max there. Shrek. There you go. Your number two. Oh. Right, my number two. Uh, it was a punt from earlier. Where why have I scrolled down so far? Uh, yeah, my number two, the crow. Um oh hi, very high. Okay. Great. Look, look, the the initial crow, I think, is always you watch it, you enjoy it, but you always have that that Brandon Lee part. You can't help but feel that. Um, if you're a wrestling fan, I, I laugh because they say the crow influenced Sting, Sting influenced Darby Allen, Darby Allen's in his influence this new version of the crow. But take that side of part of it. I just had to do it for all the wrestling fans out there. The trailer just had me like, oh, okay, we are we are retelling the story of the crow, and I don't have to have that branding guilt on me. I could just watch this film as a a, 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 a crow movie and enjoy the ride. And the, the cast looks good. The, the 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 revamping of it, which isn't an homage to the original crow look, it's a new look of the crow. I'm getting a, a fresh story, and I'm down. 
And that's what really made me feel like this, this could be a lot of fun. Eric Draven really is such a brilliantly tragical character. I'm very interested to see what one of the Skarsgård brothers does with him because they've they've got tremendous pedigree, that family. Um, you are right. The the original Crow is hinged with sadness itself with, because of what happened to Brandon Lee. In a weird, almost quasi-poetical -po way, that almost adds to the movie's grandiosity. It has. It's, it it's got that tragic romanticism to it. So what happened to Brandon in a weird way just fits poetically with that movie. Highly visual, that first one. A real treat for the eyes. Very, very stylistic. My concern with the remake is that it looks like they've gone a little bit too John Wick with it. Um, now he he was always meant to be powerful when he came back from the dead, but my man is full John Wick in this. And I'm like, have you leaned too hard into the action? We'll see. I'm I'm excited because it means that the Crow IP is going to continue. I hope it delivers. Yeah. So same here. Here, here. That's for number two. All right. My worst. Well, I should say okay, my, so... my least anticipated was the pun from earlier. Mufasa. I you know? could oh I could not give a damn about this. The the trailer had me interested. I was like, okay, you you're doing the tech demo jungle book tech thing again, right? And it's like, I get it. You have a very powerful piece of technology at your disposal that makes an like makes animation look literally photorealistic. Still animation, right? When people call it the live action line game, it's an animation. Still an animation, guys. Um but it's that throwaway line in the trailer when they say he didn't come from royalty. I was like, get the f out of here! He didn't. You see, James L. Jones in his regal Mufasa ness, looks him, but everything that like touches. It. Shut up! He's not royalty. Like Prince Charles oh, but... is looking at that guy, going, "Oh, he's some royal mother flubber." Oh uh, yeah, but like... hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In a nah. world where we look at Aladdin, the street rat who became a prince, it could very much be the same thing. For you look at Aladdin as regal? I don't. Bro, he ends up the princess is whatever. I don't know the correct term of what he ends up being. Prince consort. But... That's fine. Yeah. Fine. Doesn't change the fact he ain't royalty. He has the... a royal title. Mufasa is regal. He just has yes. it. It's yes. like you look at Thierry Henry and you're like, you're we just don't cool, know who bro. was running the we don't know who was running the pride prior. That's the part. I, the part that bugged me, and I'll mm. be honest, when I read the poster, was the whole um something like orphan. And I'm like, but his brother is Scar. Like he had the, 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 there were certain lines in it, and I'm like, but he has a brother, he can't have nobody. That troubled me. What gave it, and I'll be honest, the re there's two reasons for this why I it made my list and was, I mean it was low as hell. But two things were one, it looked like the there were parts with him and the alligators or crocodile. Was, I'm I'm not versed enough to know crocodiles in Africa it would be crocs. Thank you. And it was like, well, these are the parts of the Lion King traditional animation that I was missing in the first film <laughs> that you guys made. So it gave yeah. me hope of right. We're going it, we're expanding more into what I was looking for. So I was like, it, have you learned your lesson? Plus, I was never sure if this one was real. I was like, oh, so it is real. This looks interesting. Let's see what you do. However, I also said this about Corella, and I did regret that. I had mm -hmm. fun, enough fun with it, but it still wasn't a great film. Sometimes origin stories are not meant to be touched. And I just hope that they can acknowledge enough to build it to be like, well, this is it. Because I'm sorry, Cruella is a different universe to the 101 Dalmatians because there is no it way... Is. It's oh, it's ridiculous. It, it just didn't work. Of course it is. Pongo was given to Robert by Cruella. Shut up. That's all of that. That it just it just it just killed it for me. And it's like, and then they would, you you notice that part where they end it and like, and now the story begins. It's like, well, no, it doesn't because that's not how it started in the. the and then there were exactly. you know, anyway. Exactly. Enough. It just it just doesn't the, lead into the story if you don't do it. I'm almost feel a bit like an angry Star Wars fan here because I'm angry at not getting what I want. But it's like. The Lion King 2 actually is ripe for remake. There's some interesting themes in that movie with the remnants of Scar's outcast lionesses, that really horrible dynamic between, uh, is she called Zira? 
the 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 leader of the lionesses on the on the non Simba side in the second movie. Lion King two was a very long time ago for me. Really Bro, like there's some good stuff in that. Like that's a movie which you could remake and actually flesh out a little bit to add some substance to it. There's something there. It's obviously not on par with the first one, but there's something in that movie. Like there's some tragic scenes in it. Like that scene where one of Sira's sons, not Kofu, but the other one, he's a bit special needsy and he's trying to impress his mother. That scene where he's chasing after them in the rocks and then the rocks come down and crush him and they, you know, kind of uncover him. And the mother's literally holding him as he's dying. And he's like, I'm sorry, mother. I tried. It's like, that's, that's a mother holding her dying child. Like, there's some stuff in that movie where you could hit hard. But nah, you want to tell me about, you want to tell me about a, a, an origin story, which I would argue doesn't have much need no maybe it's, it's a silly called... it's a silly statement because no movie ever needs to be made so i take that back but i'm not interested let me say it that way it's an origin story i'm not particularly interested yeah i could kind of get it um i'm waiting to see what they deliver and i hope they deliver yeah. it right and it could even lead into someone giving a story of yes mufasa called him like, let's call it zero i can't remember her name um claiming to one of her cubs that this should be our throne because he is not the rightful king and then give a story of who it is and then that could lead into your Lion King too. You never know, you know? There's, there's hope. There's, there, there's a million and one reasons as to why things go the way they do. Right. Do, I do kind you have of the least thought, anticipated? I'm going to go with this one because, again, as I said, I've got stuff listed up to 13. Um, the, first, and the reason why this film was like that... The, I was getting the images, but my YouTube was continuing to roll from trailers that I was checking. And I heard this one and I started to pay attention. And it's called 1992. And it, as you can see by the picture there, it's got Tyrese Gibson, which was always an interesting thought. And by the looks of it, it well, not by the looks of it, it's also got Ray Liotta. So where we thought Cocaine Bear was his last film, this may well have been his last film. Um, and Scott Eastwood is in it as well. I like him. No. Now, what the story is, is about a hard-working father who works for a, a company in LA. And he's got a bit of a sticky situation with his son. That the entire reason. I'm not too sure who the actor is playing his son. I should have researched it, but I didn't even know I was going to bring this up. Ray Liotta and his son, played by Scott Eastwood, also have a bit of an awkward situation. And they are uh, relationship. Now, they're looking at a point of what they can do to make money. But in order to be able to get these, whatever it is from the factory, they would need something fantastic, like a, a miracle to divert all the cops from one mm -hmm. area of LA. Now, if you look at 1992, you could probably guess the tragedy that would have happened in 1992 that would have all of the police over there. The Rodney King police who were found not guilty and then the riot that pursued after it. So everything's there and that's where the whole world is. And that's the story. And it, these two father and sons kind of clash because they're trying to rob the place that Tyrese works. Uh, you know, so a cross of, I've got your son, you've got my son. I then, while I was watching this, I was like, okay, it looks interesting. I might give it a shot if I ever come across it. Yeah. But then it hit me. Why are we not doing a Rodney King film in 1992 if you're going to start writing around it? And that's what really bugged me about this film. So I had it as 13, but I was also like, it could even be my worst because I'm like, you have the grounds for something, and now you're you're creating a side quest to a very touching and deep story. And had you touched that now in a post, you know, when we was in lockdown, there was a certain gentleman. I don't want to start getting into the politics, but it was very reminiscent to that. You could have mm. represented and been quite fact. You know, you could have highlighted something that could have been quite. You can say the name George Floyd, AJ. I, okay. I just, listen, I don't want to bring up George Floyd. I don't want to bring up Black Lives Matter. I didn't want to bring up COVID. I know none of them demonetized, but I was just, you know, use your brain and scatter around it. That guys, you had the opportunity for something here, and you chose the side quest mission. Yes, you could go for a bit of action. There could have been a very hard hitting Rodney King story there. And that's but that's not to say this isn't a Rodney King story. No, no, no. It's about a heist. is isn't two, two dads clashing. It may show mm. it, but I don't feel. Even if it did, even if it does highlight it, why would Rodney King be at the background of a heist movie? It should not be that. That's fair. 
no, that's fair. I, I can really, I, I can understand that. Um, yeah, cool. All right, noted. My number one. I'm so excited about this, AJ. I can't tell you. I, I, and when they announced that this was coming, I was like, oh, whatever. Again, I'm so hyped. I am so freaking hyped for this. Alien Romulus. Oh, my freaking God. So you're only... First off, my first concern was, oh, it's going straight to streaming like Prey did. But then I was like, well, hang on. Prey was actually a pretty damn good movie. Maybe That's there's hope. Prey is a damn good movie. Um, yeah, once it's a step down from the original, but it's argument to be made the second or third best Predator movie out there. It's better than Predator 2. It's on par with Predators. It's a serious, good, seriously good movie. And I was like, well, do you know what? Same studio that did Prey. Maybe it'll be good going straight to screen streaming. Then you hear, no, 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 no. This thing's too good. This is going to get a cinema release. Then word came out of who was directing it. Fede Alvarez. The guy known, known for breathing life into the horror genre. The guy who gave us such movies like Don't Breathe with Stephen Lang. A fantastic horror movie. The guy responsible for the remake of Evil Dead which I believe I discussed in our top 10 goriest films of all time. So this is going a long time back now, but that film really left an impression on me. Hard to watch, very violent, very gory, like wince inducing gore, but hyper cool, man. Like really just, you know, when you look at a movie and you, you, you go a bit dumb and you're like, you know what? The best compliment I could pay you here is, you're just a well-made movie, man. I can't really find fault with you. You're not perfect based on the subject matter, but damn me, are you a well-made movie. And that's the type of quality that Fede Alvarez brings to a project. Then you start hearing these little press circulations coming around, how Ridley Scott, the director of the original movie, is actually a producer on it, which is weird because Ridley hasn't wanted to be associated with the Alien franchise for a long time. He's got this kind of paternal protection over it. You know, Neil Blomkamp, the director of um, the director of District 9, was meant to do one, and Ridley apparently nixed it because he was like, nah, I'm not going to be involved with this, and it never happened. And then Variety reported that apparently Ridley saw a final version Fede Alvarez insisted that Ridley see the final version of the movie before the screeners were sent out. And all of his publicists were telling him, like, don't do it. Ridley is notorious for being harsh on, on, on this franchise. And apparently, Ridley's reaction when he saw the movie was just to sit back and go, Fede, it's effing fantastic. That's the OG alien director on a franchise that he's protective of singing praise. That goes beyond just producer says his movie is good. That's that's deeper than that. And then to top it all off, that trailer dropped. Oh my God. Have you seen the trailer for it, AJ? No. I kind of stay away from Alien franchise the alien franchise because i've stopped at aliens and i need to do the rest and i'm just like they're all one fun day. it became a one day. you they're know when it becomes a one fun. day thing and, and that's where it is so i see it and i'm like okay so there's one coming oh it's on the list that's essentially where it's at that's why i've not even checked the trailer i'm a defender of all of the main like alien versus predator is a different thing but the mainline alien movies i'm a defender of all of them the first two are actual goated movies the following two are not bad they're fun. Very different. The third one is very Shakespearean. Very, very Shakespearean. Like, there's no guns. So it's it's complete, complete departure from Aliens. And the fourth one just goes crazy. But it's not bad. It's just crazy. Ellen Ripley is the alien queen type thing. Like, it's just like, okay, <laughs> right? I'll go with it. Um, and this one just... Bro, the... I, I haven't seen a trailer like this that's made me go, what am I watching here? Like, you know, when a trailer makes you sit up and really pay attention to it, the trailer for Alien Romulus did that. I was like, this 
is such a love letter to the original two. This feels so pure, but with Fede Alvarez's stamp on it, I'm like, nah, man, ain't nothing topping that for me for excitement this year. This is going to be special. Like you, you see this trailer and you're like, they're not misselling me on the marketing. You know, this is going to be a seriously good movie. Nice. Mm. Nice. Watch the trailer. It's awesome. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah. So I sounds great. Great. I will check it out. But again, don't expect to hear it from me straight away because the, the backstory. I'm not one to just jump in in the middle. That, that's just not the way I do it. Okay. Um, my number one was based off of the trailer. Gladiator. Yeah. Um, didn't very think it was, interesting. Didn't think it was going to be me. Didn't think it was going to be me. I like Gladiator. I don't. I don't subscribe to the Gladiator hype that everyone else did. I was uh, way too late. Okay. I think everybody else was just. Gladiator, Gladiator, Gladiator. I watched it. I was like, good movie. Don't hate it. It's not crap. Just, again, maybe overhyped. Overhyped coming in and just like, okay. You know? It's and AJ's saying, Dark Knight. It's good, but calm down. But it, look, it's that. It's also the sad bit. It, I, You know, I got six cents. I knew what was coming. So mm. when you're like, oh, he's got him. Oh, I know what's coming. All right, cool. Yes, he's happy. One of the situations that I always heard about Gladiator 2, because everyone always says the question, which is a rightful question, but he isn't available for the second film. I'm trying to avoid spoilers because it may happen to me, <laughs> but how, what, what? And then you start hearing, oh, they're going to do this. And I was like, what the plans for Gladiator 2 to be were, I'm not down with, because Gladiator was no. not mythical. I don't no. want that. I do not want a mythical movie. How dare no, you even, how, how dare you insinuate that? That's not what the film's meant to be about. The trailer kicks off, and the first thing you heard was, I saw this. And you're like, oh, okay, someone witnessed this situation. He was a kid, and the time has moved up, and it's he believes in it. He, he knows there's hope in this. And the more I watched the film and the more I saw the action and everything behind it, you know that one where you lean in and you start to pay attention more and more? Because I was like, let me see what this is. I was just invested, and a nice period, you know, Sword and Sandals movie. I'm I'm impartial to him. Like I, I I like the one that everyone hates. We like the one that everyone hates. I'm a Troy fan. So I'm like, I maybe I don't get it. You know, when it comes to these films, I enjoy them, but they, the ones that you guys hype, I'm like, yeah, let it be. I it's good. It's not great. This was good. This was good. This gave me a story. It, it helps that Denzel's in it. It's not because of Denzel. It's not because of Denzel. I mean, he's playing Denzel in this, isn't he? Like, Yeah, yeah. Which I also think the trailer is showing every single scene in the movie that Denzel is in. Probably, <laughs> I don't think probably. you're going to see more of him. Listen, there's only so much I'm... When it comes to period piece, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to keep quiet before I just... Oh Interesting God. topic also is this one, considering we're talking about the trailer and your hype for it. Now, I think it's one of those things where people are getting too mad about this because ultimately all the trailer is is a marketing thing. It's there to make you get excited for it. A lot of people are very angry about the use of Jay-Z and Kanye in the trailer. And I'm I like, read that in one of the comments. I get it. It does it. Is it a good strategy by a marketing department to use a hip hop song to create excitement for a period piece? No. Is it worth then... vetoing the movie the way the internet's done? I mean, if you look at the comments, th this is how dumb some people are, right? You look at the comments on that Gladiator 2 trailer. It's like, oh, this just shows that Ridley's not with it, with it anymore. How could he allow this? I'm like, you do realize directors don't make the marketing trailers, guys. But, but hold on, hold on. That's what they do. There's, there's many parts to it. It's not like we're going to get... Look, the words of a song... It's not like they've written the song for the film. This song has been out for years. They're actually going to say over a decade, right? It fits the period. That's point one. Point it two, does not fit the period. What are you on about? I'm talking about the gods and the thing. Like we're in the same time as people. Lyrically, it can hold. Yes, fine. that's what I'm talking about, right? Okay. So it, it it matches in that sense, right? However, and it has it's a remix. They've put the beats to show you the action parts. It's not like at any point are we expect. If you're so protected of the period, then let's have them all talk in Latin. Oh, guess what? They're not. 
it's not like Denzel's going to be rapping Kanye's lines either. So let's just, like, get rid of that part as well. Like, yeah. give up. Like, and if we're even going to play that game even more, let's go back to what bugs you earlier. Let's talk about the Baz Luhrmann Oscar winning movie. What is Nicole Kidman Satine doing singing any of those songs which were released centuries after that woman had died? And that was in the movie. That was Thank you. in the movie. So it's funny how people pick their arguments of what it is. Oh, they played hip hop on a Roman movie. Right. They played Italian based origin American Madonna in period France Renaissance era. How does that work for you guys? I agree. I agree with all these points. I it, it, it's what it's like what Chris Rock says. Black <laughs> white people too angry. Black people not mad enough. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those. I read like this one for this away comment. outrage the about the freaking song. I'm like, it's a marketing tool. It is literally there to get you talking. And guess what? You're talking. Like, it's weird how that one comment popped up when I was reading comments from people because I don't really read comments. If I'm, if I'm watching the trailer, I'm watching the trailer for me. And I saw this one thing pop up just under my screen. Yay, isn't the one. And I was like, what? Then I start to hear the music near the end of the film. And I was like, so that's what's bugging you. <laughs> oh, do you know what else? Must... Do you know what I think bugged them as well? And if you if you are one of those people, do you remember when Pink, Britney Spears and Beyonce were singing We Will Rock You in the middle of the Coliseum, drinking a Pepsi? Did that bug you? Anyway. There we are. <laughs> yeah, the things people get angry about. I'm like, it's not a reflection of the final movie. You're not going to hear hip hop in the movie. Calm down. Right, I'm gonna be real. I'm not gonna. Well, no. Are we rush more in it? Because what I was gonna say is, I don't think it's applicable because your low end ones are the ones, and by default, they would be the common. Leave ones. it. Leave it. It's fine. It's fine. May you I can... say that? Mm. Just. Just while I have the poster, I was somewhat intrigued by Borderlands. Now I've never played the game, so it doesn't yeah. bother me. Same However, boat. I'm in the same boat. I'm. This is what got me. I was like, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to stop the train that has been. We are in an era of good comic book movies. Video. But it also felt. It also felt a lot like Warcraft. Now I know the people are going to hate me because they hated me on the other channel for what I said. Do you remember when we said Warcraft felt like the B Tech, Lord of the Rings? It did, yes. This Borderland trailer feels like a very... BTEC Guardians. He said it. He said it. It just felt like you're trying to do Guardians of the Galaxy all over again. Hundred percent. The moment you watch it, you're like, so you're trying to do Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's fine. Do an attempt to Guardians of the Galaxy. Do you know what I want? Do you know what I'm fascinated by? The fact that you got paycheck or not, but the fact that an actress of the caliber of Kate Blanchett signed on to do a video game movie. It's like, yeah, I found damn. it interesting. I found wow, it interesting. okay. We throw in some money at this thing, huh? I smell some Marvel, Marvel Renaissance coming for video game movies. Yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's gonna be the next big thing. It, but it is though, you can feel it coming because let's be honest for Borderlands to be made into a movie, you can see people are looking at what's got enough of a story for us to make a game. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the pro, we're living in a world where there's a Zelda movie coming. <laughs> like, I never thought I'd live to see the day. I don't have any faith in it because I don't think that game is adaptable into a movie, but we'll see. Cool. We shall see. Okay, guys, please do comment below. Let us know what are the films you are still anticipating for. And apologies if by the time you've watched it, some films will come out, or if you're in a different country and it's come out already, we could only control what is within our parameters. But we thank you for your patience and we thank you for coming back to us. And we shall see you very soon. Is I'll let you carry the baton to, to sign us off. Yeah, look, we're, we're we're posting quite a bit of content at the moment on our other social channels. So do check us out. Check us out on TikTok and Instagram, the Silver Screen Dudes. And yeah, just keep it right here. I'm I'm still doing my weekly roundup of the Acolyte. Ugh, kill me. Um, and House of the Dragon. I don't know what TV I'll be covering next, but I've got some screeners that have been sent through to me, so there'll be some early movie reviews coming out. I uh, can't say what they are yet. I'm under embargo, unfortunately. But do keep it right here on the channel. We've got movie reviews coming. I'll aim to get out to Twisters this week. You can be sure there'll be a Deadpool and Wolverine review the week after. So yeah, lots of fun stuff going on right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. There is a subscribe button up here. 
and there is another video for you guys to watch down here so please do go ahead and do all that but that is it from us for this week i'm nico luro i'm the one aj anthony jordan and we'll see you next week guys bye